By the time that I, this is, this is what the fifth sermon, fifth lesson that I've done on Isaiah chapter 6. You know, what my, you know what my real desire is? That you will get a vision of God. When it's all over with, I hope that you will be able to get a vision of the God that met Isaiah that day. He goes into the temple. And when he goes into the temple... God has already prepared him to do something that God wanted him to do. God's got a work for us to do. But he has to prepare us first. God has to prepare us first before he calls us to do something. God hasn't called me to do anything. You're not ready. You're not ready. When you get ready, God can use you. But you've got to be usable in order for God to use you. Too often, people who are not saved People too often who have not are ready are trying to be usable when they're not they're not ready. You have to be ready to be so Isaiah goes in. And the first thing God does, he shows you himself. God comes to you first. And God speaks to you first. And what he did with Isaiah was he showed him his glory. God showed him his glory. We saw that in what verse one was it verse two, verse one. And when he went, when he when he went to the temple, there were several angels, or beings in his vision, and the angels were manifesting in a way that they saw the glory of God. Not God as a person, but God in His splendor, God in His glory. He filled the temple. He filled the whole building with His glory. I mean, when you walk into a place, something they say, I've heard people say, when He walks in, He fills the whole building. When somebody walks in, He just takes over the whole building. I, not, I think when John MacArthur does it, that's, in my case, it's when John MacArthur walks in, everything just stops. When God is there, the angels who were perfect, the angels did what? What did the angels do when they looked upon him? What did they do? They covered their face, they covered their mouth, and they flew with the other two. When you step into the presence of God, you're going to cover your eyes and you're going to cover your mouth because you're stunned. You, when you behold the glory of God in His essence and you learn who God is, you're going to do this. Over your face. And you're going to keep your mouth shut. That's going to be hard for me to do. You're going to keep your mouth shut. You will. You will. When you sense the presence of God because it causes you to see your own sinfulness. Until you see your own sinfulness, you'll never understand how glory God is. And the angels were flying around and they were singing glory to God and they were singing to each other, Holy, Holy, Holy is God. That's what you're going to do. When you see God, you're going to see His holiness. And the angels who were already holy the angels were perfect beings. And they recognized His holiness. <coughs> we're so lackadaisical. Oh, hum. When it comes to being in the presence of God, we, are, we need to be at awe that when the Word of God has been preached, are we reading His Word? If we actually believe that God in, incarnated in the Word of God, it touches our heart and it changes our lives. And the angels were just amazed. I want to share with you something. When shall... So then, so he goes on, and I, I, I'm picking up where I'm trying to... And it says in the post of the doors moved at the voice of him that cried and the house was filled with smoke. 
That's verse 1. The first, the first paragraph, God introduces himself. Isaiah got a vision of God. He saw himself as who he was. And we've been through that. And then we come to verse 5. What's the first thing Isaiah said? Woe is me. Can I share with you something? You will know when you have met God, when you see yourself, woe is me. Oh, I'm in real trouble. Now. I've met God. You see, so many of us believe God is so loving that God likes us like we are. God just loves us anyway. And I share with you, God hates you. He hates your sin if you're not saved. God, God doesn't love you. God loves everybody in a sense. What I'm trying to say is, God, when 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 God, when you get a hold of God's holiness, he, what He's doing, He's sharing with you, and you. And what, what God does is, it, then said I loathe me, for I am what? Undone. Undone. What else did He say? I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. Your mind, is, for my eyes have seen the living Lord God of hosts. When you see God, if you get a vision of God, in, in your concept, you get a vision of God, believe me, you're going to fall on your knees. You're not going to be arrogant. You're not going to shout. You're not going to say, Hello, God, good to see you. I'm glad you came over. No, you're, he's going to reveal to you His holiness, and when He reveals His holiness, you see your sinfulness. Mm. It's the only way God can use you. you see, you got to get rid of yourself. We're, we, we think we are somebody. We, we are full of self. We are, we're prone to think, God, I'm glad God saved me. Now, he can, now He's got somebody He can use. And so God... This is Isaiah. Here is this is this is conversion. This is how salvation takes place. He saw his he saw his wickedness. He saw his sinfulness. He saw he was undone, and he was in a bad shape. And he fell on his knees, and he said, "I am I'm I'm I'm, I'm in trouble. I am in trouble." And he was. He was in a lot of trouble. Now look at verse. Verse 6. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hands, which he had taken with a tongue from the altar. God said, You are undone. You are wicked. You are a sinner. You are in need of cleansing. So to illustrate that, the cerebral went to the altar and picked up a live coal in his vision, as it were, and came over and touched the tongue, as it were, of Isaiah. Because there needs to be a cleansing. There needs to be a cleansing. Before I became a Christian, I was as a filthy rag. There was nothing in me that merited salvation. God did not see anything in me that he said, you know, I'm going to save you. You're, you know, you're going to be a preacher one day and I'm going to save you because you're such a great guy. When God saw me, he saw me as a wicked, low-down son. Undone. Unfaithful. Rejecting of Christ. But when I got a vision of God through the preaching of the Word of God and the Gospel, I saw my sinfulness and the thing I did, I went to my knees. And I'm undone. And I'm left to notice it says then in verse 7, And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips and thy iniquities to take away, and thy sins is purged. Somehow, some way, through the process, our sin needs to be purged. When I see my sinfulness... I know I'm sinful in that I have rejected Christ. I'm not talking about if I'm a drunk or if I if I'm a drunk or if I kill people or whatever. What God is interested in is that I've rejected Him. I've rejected Him as my Lord and Savior. 
And so he says, your sin has to be perfect. Notice it's singular, sin, not sin, sin, the sin of rejecting me. That has to be purged. You know, some people are neutral with God. Uh, one lady said this week on uh, television, she said, I wish they would take the religion out of Christmas. She said that on, on one, of the, one of the doctors, she said, my problem with Christmas is, is that we put religion in it. At least she was honest. At least she was honest. And the other girl said, there is no, is the reason for the season is Christ. And she's supposed to be an expert doctor, an expert psychologist. She says we get on a whole lot better if we just take religion out of Christmas. And, it, you know, like I preached a couple weeks ago, it's a hassle to try to live both lives. No. It's a hassle trying to be a secular Christian with Christmas with all the trimmings and then to try to serve God at the same time. You can't do that. And so she said, she said that it would be better, you know, do one or the other. So God illustrated from the altar taking the tongue and, and, and putting it on his tongue and he says, your sins have been purged. God purchases our sin through Jesus Christ. He purged our sin on the cross, provided the means whereby we could be saved. And that was what he was illustrating in that verse. And, and, and also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, because see, now he's prepared for service. Yeah. And he said, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And, there, and, and Isaiah said, What? Here I am, here I send am. me. Then said I, Here am I. Send me. Send me. Send me. He didn't say send Frankie. He didn't say send Mrs. Isaiah. He said, send me. <clears throat> the performance demanding, the highest attribute of the intelligence. Let me go. Who will reprove kings for my sake? Who will expose and denounce wickedness? See, God had a plan. God's plan was he wanted somebody to go to Israel and tell them they were wicked sinners. Isaiah knew that his people were on the verge of losing it all. Israel had already been through going Israel, they were going through captivity. God was about ready to put them in captivity. They were, few were responding, and God needed somebody to go to go to Israel and share with them, you are not living right. I need somebody to do that. I mean, who wants to go someplace to be a missionary in some place where you know you're going to preach for 20 years and nobody's going to get saved? And so God needed someone to be ready to go to be a missionary to Israel and tell them there's a need of repentance on our part. And Isaiah said, send me. First of all, you've got to have a vision of God. God communicates, He speaks, He makes Himself manifest and known in the soul. And the soul has captivated and has received what God makes known or communicates. Once you get a vision of God, once you learn that, then you get then you get an insight. I'll talk about maybe a few months. You get insight. But first of all, here's what happens: a vision of sin, the, the, the vision effects. Here's what the vision gets: a sense of sin. Number two, a sense of forgiveness. After verse after verse three, he knew he had been forgiven. God forgives. He purges us. He cleanses us. He gives us a new life. He completely gives us a new nature. He purges the old sin, replaces it with a new nature. We have a new life in Christ, and now we're ready to be served. And then, it, then, we, have, then we have a sense of duty. 
And then we have the power to perform that duty. God saves us for a purpose. Do you know how few people are saved in the first place? Every person that God elects into salvation, He has a job for them to do. Amen. 